Welcome to the Bite Size Storytelling Show, brought to you by Comiful.com, where we bring you techniques, advice, and stories that will help you on your writing journey. Without further ado, please give a warm welcome to our special guest. Hello, Comiful readers. My name is Brian Collins and I'm an author from Ireland and I'm also a blogger. And one of the things that I hear a lot about that new writers struggle with is the topic of writer's block. I can't find any ideas for things to write about. When I sit down in front of the blank page, how do I get the words flowing? Or I'm just waiting for the muse or inspiration to strike so I can get going with my stories and my articles and so on. And writer's block was actually something that I struggled with years ago. I used to spend hours writing and rewriting the same stories because I felt like they weren't good enough. And I wasn't re really making any progress. I just felt blocked. Well, after studying how other writers approach this problem, I found a way around writer's block. So in this video lesson, I'm going to share with you one strategy that I have that I use to conquer writer's block. And the strategy is actually from a course that I offer to writers. And I'm gonna give you the strategy because I think it'll help you if writer's block is something you want to learn more about. So let's dive in. How can you ensure you always have ideas for things to write about? How can you ensure when you sit down in front of the blank page, you've got something you can draw upon for whatever it is you're writing? Well, you need a bank of ideas and that's what I'm going to cover in this lesson. So a bank of ideas is simply a place where you deposit ideas consistently over time. Much like a saver who puts money into their bank account or my daughter who puts money into their piggy bank, to never run out of ideas, you need what's called an idea bank. It's simply a place where you deposit ideas consistently over time. Much like a saver who puts money into their account for a house or a big purchase like a car, or even my daughter who deposits money into her piggy bank so she has some money to spend on holidays. Basically, you need to deposit little ideas into your idea bank regularly. So when the time comes to write, you can go to your idea bank, you can break it open, and you can pull out something that you can use for your story. Perhaps that's something you pull out is an interesting anecdote, or perhaps an interesting hook you came across. Or perhaps there's a fact or figure you want to include in a non-fiction article. Or perhaps you simply think of a personal story that you want to insert into your blog post. Whatever it is you're writing, having an idea bank will enable you to write that article, that book chapter, or that story that much quicker and also with a little bit more originality. To illustrate the importance of having an idea bank and to explain why it's something professional prolific writers rely on, let me tell you a little bit about one of my writing heroes, the British children's author Roald Dahl. He wrote books like Matilda and James and the Giant Peach and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Well, one day Roald Dahl was sitting in traffic and he wasn't going anywhere, but he suddenly thought of an idea of a breakthrough for a story he was working on. But he didn't have anywhere to write down this idea and he didn't want to let it go. So he simply got out of his car in traffic, so I gather it must have been at a standstill, walked around to the back of the car and the car was all dirty and in the dirt he simply wrote down the word chocolate. And that idea formed the fragment that ultimately became Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You see, Roald Dahl, like many prolific authors, understood the importance of capturing ideas as soon as they appear and storing them somewhere where he could quickly use them later on when he needed. So if you want to start depositing ideas in your idea bank regularly, I would recommend that you get into the habit of using a notebook. While digital tools are great, there's something about a notebook that encourages fresh and creative thinking in a way that's just not possible when you're connected. Now, I've used cheap notebooks that I've bought in the local supermarket for a couple of euro or a couple of dollars. And I've also used the more fancy notebooks like this moleskin which cost uh, approximately 20 euro which is probably a little bit expensive for a notebook but anyway here's the thing i just simply record fragments like the chocolate fragment that i talked about there a few moments ago in these notebooks i jot down outlines for blog posts and articles sometimes i'll draw a mind map or sometimes i'll just simply write a few sentences 
And these will just simply serve as ideas that I can reference or look back on when I'm feeling blocked or when I'm looking for something that's gonna inspire some fresh thinking for whatever it is I'm writing at the moment. I've used notebooks like this in the past for traditional diary or journal entries, whereby I explain what I did on a particular day or what I'm thinking about a particular topic. But lately I've started to use a digital journaling tool alongside these paper notebooks and I'll explain why this works. So this is a screenshot from the journaling tool day one. Day one is a dedicated journaling tool or app that I use almost every day and I use it to record entries about what I did in a given day or entries about a particular topic. So you can see here on the left hand side of the screenshot, I have a number of journals with inside day one on specific topics. So I have topics like creativity, productivity, business, regrets, new book, lessons, tools, personal planning, writing, and so on. And basically what I'll do is I will open up one of these journals inside of day one and I'll just write a short entry, 150 to 300 words, about whatever it is I'm thinking or whatever I've learned about that particular topic on a given day. It may be a few days before I may revisit that particular topic, but I find this lends a sense of organization to my journal entries and I'm quickly able to reference how my thinking has progressed over time. Now you don't need to use day one, you could simply just create a folder on your computer called journal and then just create a series of plain text documents based on the topics that you want to cover within your journal. Or you could just simply have a single file that you use, you use on your computer. But basically I find that using a notebook to capture ideas when they're a bit rough and ready and using a digital journaling app like day one works quite well in tandem for encouraging different types of thinking and also for organizing my thinking before I sit down to actually write something. Now I should also say that you don't necessarily need to use a dedicated journaling app or a notebook, you could just dictate notes to yourself. And I have here a personal voice recorder that I've used in the past. And sometimes I'll just dictate a entry or a draft of an article into this voice recorder and I'll just get it transcribed. And this is another way to deposit ideas into my idea bank. Now I want to give you something a little bit more practical. I want to give you a tool that you can use to figure out the types of topics that are resonating with your readers and then to use those to topics to write something that will engage with them. So if you're writing nonfiction and you want to find ideas to put into your idea bank, the first tool that I'd recommend you consider using is called BuzzSumo. And I've been using BuzzSumo for the last few years to find everything from better headlines to inspiration for articles for Forbes to even just find information that I could use in my book chapters. So let's say I wanted to write something on the topic of productivity. I will simply type in the topic into BuzzSumo and I'm gonna go with productivity tips and here's what will happen. BuzzSumo will show me the most popular articles that reference productivity tips from the past year. Of course, I can change this to the past two years and it'll run another quick search. And then I can click on each one of these articles. So here's one here, Einstein on the only productivity tip you'll ever need to know. And I can see the social media networks that this got the most shares in. So I'll be particularly interested in reading this article. So what I'll do is I will open this up and I won't actually read the article right now, but I'll just simply save it to an app I use called Pocket. And that way I can read these articles later on on my iPhone or on my iPad. But what I'll want to do is get a sense of the different types of articles on this topic that were popular with readers. And then I can try and write something with my own slant on that particular topic. The other way you can use BuzzSumo is if you find a writer online whose work that you admire or you want to understand a little bit more of. So let's take the New York Times bestselling author, James Clear, who writes often about habits. And I recently interviewed him for my podcast. Well, I can actually put his domain name into BuzzSumo and I'll click search. And it will show me his most popular articles on his site. So this is a great way of figuring out the types of articles that are working for a particular writer that you, know, you want to learn a little bit more about. It's also helpful to understand that BuzzSumo will give you more information on the word count for the articles in question. So let's say I just want in-depth articles, and then I'll just click apply filter. 
this will just narrow the search down to articles that are a little bit longer. Now, BuzzSumo is a premium tool. So depending on where you're based, you know, you may spend $100 or more per month on BuzzSumo, but perhaps you could just take out a subscription for a single month and use it for some research. Or if that's beyond your budget, you could use the free version of BuzzSumo, which just simply provides a little bit less information about popular articles on a given topic. However, I do like the premium version because it has advanced tools like a question analyzer. So if I go back to my original search about productivity tips, and I've set this for the past two years. And if I click on question analyzer, and then I type in productivity tips again, and it'll run a quick search. So BuzzSumo will show me some of the questions that people are asking about productivity. And I can go and read these questions, which are on sites like Reddit and Quora, and I could see what questions people are asking, and then I could try and answer them on these sites before I write that particular article. Now, the other tool that I like to use for my idea bank is called Answer the Public. Answer the Public is basically a free SEO tool. That's a search engine optimization tool that shows you the types of queries people are typing into Google. So a little bit like that question analyzer from BuzzSumo, except specific to Google. So let's type in productivity tips and see what comes up. And this is actually a free tool, although there is a premium version, but the free tool is very powerful. So I'll just type in productivity tips and type quick questions. It'll take a moment to run the search and then it'll present search results in the form of a visualization or data that I can use uh, to get ideas for my articles. So what are the productivity tips? So this is what people are typing into Google. Here's another one here. Now these is, this could be a good source of articles that I could write. Productivity tips for work, productivity tips for students, entrepreneurs, and so on. So I could write an article on any of those topics, or I could include references to these search queries in my article. Uh, and it also shows comparisons. And then I can filter my search alphabetically. Uh, I should say that in this case, there's not a huge amount of result, results compared to some other topics. So let's put in something a, a bit more general so you can see just how powerful this is. Let's just put in time management. Again, it'll just take a minute to run the search and there's a lot more information here. So you can see now why it's presented both as a visual, visualization and also as data. So when I click on visualization, I can see all of the different queries that people are putting into Google. And this is a gold mine if I want to write on the topic of time management as part of my freelance writing. And if I click on data, then I can just look at all of these topics and put them into a spreadsheet or a Word document and go from there. So there you go. That's how I build my idea bank. I use a traditional notebook for ideas that I have. I use journaling to explore my thinking on a topic. Sometimes I'll just dictate whatever I'm thinking into a voice recorder or app on my phone. And then when I need something that's a bit more practical, something that's a bit more analytical, I'll use tools like BuzzSumo to see what's popular online and answer the public to see what people are searching for and the questions that they may have. So I hope you found that strategy for conquering writer's block helpful. If you'd like to learn more, just visit becomearitertoday.com forward slash join and I'll send you a free book of writing prompts that will help you with this strategy and with other problems like writer's block. Otherwise, you can just email me brian, B-R-Y-A-N at becomearitertoday.com. Thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, be sure to like, subscribe, and give a special thanks to our volunteer instructor. Reviews and likes really go a long way and help us provide more awesome writing resources to the Comiful community. If you aren't on Comiful yet, you can join a community of poets, short story authors, and fan fiction writers on Comiful.com.